All right, there. We've recovered from the technical issues with the camera. So we're good. Did anybody come up with some sort of idea on this amount of work? So let's just recap. If we put this at the top, the amount of work being done for every ad is n. So we're going to have to shuffle everything down. If we remove something, we have to shuffle everything down. If there's anything, n amount of work. Linear time. But if we make this the top, it's always constant time. I don't care what n is. It's always going to be constant time unless we are in that scenario where we have to expand capacity. If we have to expand capacity, how much work is that? N. So, let's think about this for a second. I have to do n amount of work. So sometimes it's going to be linear. But most of the time it's going to be constant, right? Because I only have to expand capacity every once in a while. This is where we get into an idea of amortized computational complexity. Amortization is a fancy way of saying, like, ah, we're going to spread the cost out over this period of time. I'm not going to do a really rigorous explanation of this. I'm going to give you a high level one because the rigor is going to come in later courses. We're going to talk a lot about computational complexity, don't get me wrong, but something like this amortized stuff, I'm just going to give you the idea. So let's say I have, where did I put the marker? Let's say I have an array with, actually no, I'm going to call the max m, because it was easy to change. Let's say I have an array with m things in it. No, that's not true. Let's say I have an array with m spots. OK? How many times can I do, and there's, there's nothing in it yet. It's an empty stack. So I've got a stack with M stop spots, an array. If I, how many times do I get to push something onto this stack where it's only constant time? M. So I get M time, like M order one things. But then the next time, how much, I, the next time I want to push something, I got to expand capacity, right? Right? Okay. So that next time, I've got to do an expand capacity. Okay. So I've got one times order n amount of work. I've got one thing, oh, that's not n, that's m. But then, of course, I double this. Now I'm going to double it. Right? So now I'm over here. How many times do I now get to add, like how many more times do I have to, do I get to add to this array? Do we have to? Do we have to? No, actually. Constant? Oh, no, it's not constant. It's only M. Because M of the two M spots are used up, right? So I get m order ones. And how much how much work is it to copy over those things? Well, actually, I gotta copy over all the things to a new one that's twice as big. So how much stuff do I have to copy over this time? Two m. So I've got one order 2m amount of work. But of course, who remembers what we do with coefficients? Kind of ignore them, right? We don't really care about that. We care about the fact that, oh, it's linear versus quadratic or constant. This scale right here, eh. But of course, let's say I do it again. How many times? So now I multiply m times 2 times 2, right? So I've got m times 4. How many things do I get to add now before having a constant, before having a linear time operation of static expanding capacity? 
2m this time. 2m order ones. Then when I have to expand capacity, how much work is it going to be? 4m. 4m. But of course, yeah, we don't really care about that. Point being, every, almost all the time, we are going to, and I want to emphasize that what I'm explaining to you right now is not overly rigorous. I'm just giving you the intuition. I get to do a lot of order ones, and then every once in a while, I've got to do a linear time thing. Well, I could say we're just going to like amortize this linear amount of work. Like, I can pretend that I, I put it on to the previous M adds. I'm just going to take it and divvy it amongst these things. How many times, like if I took M and divvied it into M things, how much more work is there on each of those M things? Not M. M not 2M. You're M so, no, 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 absolutely not. You're, you're, you're looking for something far too complex. Slow it down. Take it easy. Computer scientists were not that bright. We needed it to be simple. I did M things of constant time. Okay? So I had N things of constant time. Imagine for a second this row right here. You're constant time, 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 you, you. You're all constant time things. Imagine that the students sitting in the front row are the amount of work being done. I've got M of them. In this case, M is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? 7. And each one of you represents M. Or not M, order 1. Or one unit of work, and there's M of you. M in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So imagine each of these students is like, oh, I pushed something onto the stack, pushed 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 onto the stack. They're not the stack, they're representing the amount of work being done. But now, all of a sudden, I gotta do that extra one. And I now have seven students, because M in this case is seven. I have one thing of seven students. But I, what I want to do is I want to spread it across. I want to like pretend I'm spreading that amount of work. I'm amortizing that amount of work over these seven things representing one unit of work. If I have seven more students, how do I evenly distribute them among these seven people? One, one each. So, oh, so instead of like one unit of work, it's like, oh, it's you plus one other unit of work. That's like two units of work. But what do we care about? Do we care about two? Two is kind of like a coefficient. So we ignore two, so it's basically order one. And now there's you and that other person I assigned to you. But really, that's just one. That's still constant time. It's still constant time, still constant time. I'm dividing the one thing that takes order m, seven, over the previous seven operations. And if I do that, I, if I'm amortizing that work out, those pushes are basically, with amortization, we would say, ah, it's like constant time all the time, if we amortize. Did you go back to what you said there? You said like we're all like our separate stacks? No, you're not, like you don't represent a stack. I push things on the stack and what you were representing was, okay, I pushed one thing onto the stack, whatever it was. That was one unit of work. This is one unit of work. Here's another unit of work. Here's another unit of work. Here's another unit of work. You are representing the units of work, which are just order one. Okay. Constant amount of work. Whatever it takes, that's how much it is. So I was able to do this many units of work before I ran out of room. How much work did I do total? So, But that next time I add something, I have to expand capacity, which is going to double this from 7 to 14. So that's a linear amount, that's a linear amount of work. And because m in that case was 7, that's going to be 7 amounts of work. But I'm just going to dig that up amongst the 7 previous things. Does that make sense? More sense? Yeah. Other questions? 
Yes. Sorry, say that again. Um, you're saying in the existing seven months, we are adding the new ones in. So <coughs> how exactly will we then do this? You know, we'll, we'll look at the code. It's going to be the exact same expand capacity as that we saw before, but we'll look at the code. All right, so, <coughs> yes? Oh, yeah. um, why was it again that the coefficients didn't matter? Well, because we're going to have a much longer lecture about this, but I'll give you a quick and dirty explanation. We care about how much the algorithms grow, how much more work has to happen as n grows. So what we care about is if we had something that was linear, and this is like time, and this is like n. So as I increase n, okay, if something's constant, it's just it's always going to take this amount of time. Whatever that unit is, I don't know. No matter what n is, it's always that value. If something's linear, it's going to grow like this, right? Like a line. But let's say I have something that grows like n squared, which we're going to see a lot of. Like a bunch of those sorts we looked at last semester were n squared. That's going to grow like this. So we care about how the growth, ha like the shape of that growth function. And the shape is going to be dictated by like, oh, is it n, n squared? If I did like two times this, it's gonna like it's going to be worse, don't get me wrong. But that's not what's important to us. What's important to us is what's the shape of the growth? And this line pretend it's straight. I know it kind of goes, but they're straight lines. So we really don't care about the coefficients. Because here's the thing too. Let's say it was one let's say this was one. But let's say I didn't actually have order one amount of work. Let's say I had order five. So, oh, so we don't line at five. Does that really matter? I mean, it depends on really what you're asking, what you want to know. But at the end of the day, how does uh, the the change in this affect this? It, do it, it doesn't. It's just constant. How does the change in this affect this on the linear one? Well, it's linear. That's what's important. The coefficients, not so much. We also talk about dominating terms. We're going to talk about that. We're going to have a whole lecture on computational complexity coming up. I like where your head is, but don't worry about it so much today. All right, so a lot of hand wavy stuff. Let's actually start talking about an implementation of a stack. We already basically did. What are we going to use? An array. So we need to hold on. We'll use an array. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something called an array int stack. This is going to be a stack. <coughs> You built with an array, and it's going to hold integers. Sound good? Perfect. So the thing we can put in the stack will be integers. Actually, they're going to be pointers to integers. Remember, I like pointers. Yep. So here's the idea. This is what I want my stack to look like. I want to have, OK, like the stack itself is that thing in the cyan box. Top is going to keep track of both how many things are in my stack, and the next available spot. Right? <coughs> Notice that top is not the last thing on the stack. It's actually the next available spot. So if I actually wanted to pop something, I would have to do top minus 1, right? But anyway. Uh, and then what I'm going to have is a stack thing that's going to be a pointer to my array, which is going to be an array of pointers to some sort of objects. In this case, they're going to be pointers to integers in dynamic memory. That's what we're going to have. That's the visualization. And the reason I showed that it goes on forever is, I mean, we're going to talk about that expand capacity. It doesn't really matter to me how long it is. So if I push something onto the stack, this is what I want to happen. Top will update, and then I add it there. So far, so good, right? If I remove something, well, there we go. We removed it from where that dot was. Top is four. We remove another thing. We remove it from where the three was. Top now becomes three. Any questions about this idea? Yeah? So what are you saying is the difference with the dot and the question mark there? Oh, nothing really. The dot's just there to be like, ah, oh, they were in there. That doesn't really matter anything for our actual implementation. That's just to visualize like, hey, they were there, they're gone now. Yeah? So there's not actually anything on top. It's just like the, the next one after Bingo. the one. So when I want to pop, 
the top is pointed to the next empty spot, like the, the empty spot, where is the top really? Bingo. The, yeah, exactly. Good. You're on the ball today. Good job. So, array and stack. A stack will be an array that we're keeping the integer pointers in. Top will keep track of where the top is. The, the next empty spot, maybe, is a better thing to say. Uh, and what else are we probably going to need? Maybe a max to keep track of how big the array is, kind of like our, uh, like in the lab and in the code we did together and in your assignment. All right, so let's start with the header. I'm going to have these. Integer max, integer top, integer pointer pointer, stack. I'm going to have my constructors. It's good to have those things. Oh, pardon me. We're going to have push. But of course, what might happen if we push and we run out of room? We're going to have to expand capacity. And uh, pop, peak, size, is empty. And the two string ones then. So, what is the type of the things I'm going to push onto the stack? Integer pointers. Not integers, integer pointers. And what am I popping off the stack? Integer pointers. How do you know? Because the return type of pop is integer pointer. Peak is also going to be an integer pointer. So let's write the constructor. Here's a basic default constructor. Looks good. This should look reasonably familiar to you at this stage. You've probably done this a couple of times. I've started, like, ah, you know, default, let's have max size start at 10. Why? Because I could have made it 100, I could have made it 17. It doesn't matter. Top is 0, because how many things are currently in the stack? And then I create an array of integer pointers of size max. So as of right now, and everyone listen up, because I know half of you are, have or will or are currently struggling with this on your assignment. How many things are currently on the stack? Zero. Everybody say zero. zero. How many things, how many spaces are there? Ten. Ten. Exactly. That's important. We have 10 available spots, which will grow if we have to expand capacity. But the point is, we have 10 available spots, but currently there's actually nothing in on the stack. Make sure you. You remember that. Here, let's have another constructor. One where maybe I redefine the size. If I happen to know, well, I'm going to have a stack, or just one second, where I know I'm going to have at least 20 things in it, well, maybe I'll just make it size 20 to begin with. That way we don't actually end up having to call that expand capacity. Does it really matter? Not really, because of that advertisement I was talking about. But, you know, more power to you. Yes? So, going from the last slide there, like, would the top of the stack be 11 or 10 then? If no, the top of the stack is zero. I created an array with 10 spots. So. Yeah, but if you, if you filled it all the way, like. Oh, yeah, if I filled it all the way, I had to expand capacity, top <coughs> does increment. Would it be 11 though, or would it be 10? Oh, it would be 10. Because 10 is, what, like, if the top is 10, does index 10 exist in an array of size 10? No. Bingo. So it would expand capacity to size 20 with the last index is 19, but it would be the 10th, or 10th if we started counting at the zero end. It would be an index 10. Okay. <coughs> you'll, you'll see, I'm sure. Once you see the code, it'll probably be like, oh, yeah. Any questions about these two constructors, though? Good. So here's an example of calling it. Great. So if I do this, what do I have? Well, I'm creating my stack object. Max is set to 5. Why? Because that's the value I put in as the parameter. Why 5? Because. What's the top? Well, 0, because we haven't added anything. And my stack is now this. This is it. Right? Right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Currently, the top is 0. How many things are in this stack? Zero. Where's the top? Zero. But if I ever had to expand capacity, five would become here. So I would expand capacity, and then it goes to the index five. 
And of course, I've got S, which is a pointer to the stack object instance. Any questions? Is that a question? Well, just a good stretch. All right. So let's do a copy constructor. OK. We'll just copy over the max and the top. This isn't particularly interesting at this stage. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy over, I'm not copy over, we're going to create a new integer array, pardon me, integer pointer array. But now we actually have to ask ourselves a question. Remember before when I was ranting about deep copies, shallow copies? I have to ask myself the question, when I make a copy of the stack, do I want a deep copy, a shallow copy, or somewhere in between. And this is ultimately a design decision for you to decide. Like, this is for you to decide. In this situation, I would kind of want, I think what I want is like a middle of the ground copy constructor. <coughs> One that will create a new actual stack, but it will happen to point to the exact same objects that exist in another stack. Maybe I don't actually want that. Maybe in my implementation later on, I want a copy constructor that will do the deep, deep copy. But in this situation, and for the benefit of the course, when you get to especially assignment two and assignment three, we're going to do it this way. So what this means is, if I have a stack <coughs> with like this in it, and I make a copy, Based on this code, the copy is going to mean, oh, OK, create a new one, great. Copy over the pointers, but don't make copies of the integers, I guess. <coughs> Just copy over the pointers. So we're going to have this situation. Now in this student example, in that course, I made, we made copies of the students. We made sure we made new instances of those students ob student objects. But in this situation, this is what I want. I want to make sure I'm keeping track with my stack the same, those same things. But we can change it. If you came along and you're like, nope, I want that deep copy, go ahead, fine. Great. But this is what we're going to go with. Why not have a deep copy? Like, what's the benefit? So the benefit there would be, so for example, on your assignment, let's say, the point of the stack, so this is a subtle thing, it's a nuanced thing, and it's more of like a, a design philosophy. These data structures, these popular ones, the stacks, queues, and lists, whatever, of course, we can implement them, if we're following the definition, we can make these types of design decisions ourselves. But there's, a, there's like a, a philosophy or a paradigm where the idea is the data structures they're not the things in control of the data itself. All, it's just a container. And it's going to keep track of that stuff for us. OK? So this container is going to keep track of these things. But if I make a copy, the data that, like, we have pointers to integers. Those integers that we decided to put on the stack were created somewhere else. And then we gave the stack pointers to those integers, right? So someone somewhere created those integers. They're the ones in charge of that data. They're the ones in charge of making copies, of deleting important things, which we're about to look at. They created the data. They're in charge of the data. I'm the stack. I'm not in charge of making copies. I'm not in charge of deleting the data that, I'm, that, that my contents points to. I'm just in charge of like, keeping track of things with pointers in some certain order. So it's this idea that it's just a container. And someone else's responsibility is the data. So with that in mind, I'm so glad you said, oh wait, I guess we skipped the deconstructor. Once we get to the deconstructor, uh, things will come together a little bit more. How do I get the size of my stack? This is really easy. Return the top, because top conveniently is also the size. Is empty? All right, return whether or not top is zero. If top is zero, does that mean the stack's empty? If top is not zero, does that mean it's not empty? No. 
Did I word that right? <laughs> All right, here's a two string. Start with an empty string. I like the string building. For i to zero, two less than top, keep appended to that string the string version of whatever is <coughs> that stack is pointing to. So convert. Go to that pointer, get the value, turn that integer into a string and append it. And then I guess I'm adding commas after each one. And then at the very end, just for fun, I add this little like, oh, that's the top. Some little indication to whoever printed this out of where the top of the stack actually is, like which side's the top. Do note that this is not necessary. I just put it there because I thought it'd be fun. Here's a push. Well. All I have to do is take the stack, go to location top, put the thing to push, which is a pointer to an integer, put that pointer to an integer into that next available spot. And then once I build that spot, where is the top going to go? Next, yeah. next one. So top plus plus means top equals top plus one. <coughs> but of course, what are we missing? If top is equal to max, so let's say, in my scenario, where I have five, what's the last index? Four. What will top be? Five. So if, if I ever come along and want to add something to that fifth spot, that if condition will be true. Top will be equal to max. And if that happens, I call expand capacity. And then after expand capacity is done, carry on as if everything else is normal. Yep. That expand capacity thing, you always say you Uh, technically, you can do whatever you want. Doubling actually has some nice mathematical properties, one of which being how we do the amortization and whatnot. It kind of comes out really nicely, and then the, that's the optimal way to do it based on that. But you really, you can do whatever you want. One could say, uh, just create a new array of size one more every time. Multiply by 1,000, whatever. It doesn't matter. But used to. So expand capacity. This is going to look very familiar. Max, max times two, create the new array of the new size, copy over the contents, delete the old stack, set our stack pointer to the new array. Effectively identical to before, the only difference was the type of the array. It wasn't a pointer to, it wasn't a pointer to pointer to students, it's pointer to pointer to integer. That's basically the difference. Other questions? Yeah? Uh, here, are we creating the entire new array of double the size and deleting the old one, or just adding the array size next to each other? No, we're creating a whole new one. So when online, well, like on make new array, that creates a whole new array that's twice as big. If the original array was somewhere over there in RAM, the new one might be over there, I don't know. So it's a whole new one. We copy over the whole new one and then delete this one. We're not actually extending the length of the old one. We are making a new one, copying and deleting the old one. And then are you renaming the new one like with that last yep. one? So I'm saying, OK, that stack pointer, which pointed to the old one, which we just deleted, now you will have the pointer to the new one. So like seemingly, it's the same array, just double. Bingo. Seem so as far as like after this function is done, like, it doesn't change really anything. That's why, like, I could say, like, if that condition's true, do expand capacity and then do whatever after. If that condition's not true, just skip it and do whatever's after. Like, do you kind of see how it's beautifully, like, modular in that sense, where it's like, either you do it or you don't. Whether you do it or you don't has no effect on this bit, which is the actual, like, adding bit. So there's our push. Expand capacity, right? We just looked at it. Pop. Okay, let's think about pop. What does pop do? If we remove something from the stack and return it. Great. So let's see what we want to do. Take the top, minus, minus. Okay, so if top is 10, what does top become? Nine. Then we return stack at location 9, which is conveniently, right? And then conveniently, top is now also holding on to the next available spot, because we just ditched nine. Right? So it's empty. Isn't that cool? Now, we have to ask ourselves a question. 
What do we do if we try to pop from an empty stack? It's kind of a tricky question, right? Here's the thing, I don't know. Should I crash? Should I give the user a message? Should I, like, I don't know. Maybe what I should do is communicate to the programmer in some way that something funny might happen. Who remembers what we call this? Somebody yell it out. Growing exceptions. Exceptions. But of course, in Python, you didn't throw exceptions. What did you do? You raised them. C++, we're going to throw them. So here, the point being, what do we do if we try to pop? Do nothing, carry on, say something to the user, crash the program, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise an exception. I'm going to raise an exception that, okay, <coughs> don't do it, and pass this message on to the piece of code that tried to pop from the stack. <coughs> Say, whatever, there's somewhere somebody asked, there was a piece of code that said pop from an empty stack. And this piece of code there, throw that exception, is going to throw that exception to that calling code to let that piece of code know something, something exceptional happened that you need to take care of. By the way, if you're using Visual Studio, you can use the top one, which is nice. If you're using just Mac, just use the bottom one, that one. <coughs> You don't need both, you would only want one or the other. Cool? So would C++ actually take one off the top if you didn't have that exception? <coughs> well, no, no. We, we didn't have to write it. Well, we, we would have to do something, right? So what it would have done is decremented top to negative one. And then, I mean, clearly we're going to do something funny there. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. That's bad. So this is the protection. Other questions? Yeah? Can you just have it print out like uh, the stack is empty? Can you see well, it? good design in this situation is throw the exception. Then what you would say when trying to call this is you would say like, try to pop from the stack. And if you do, good. But if something went wrong, if you catch that exception, do what you want to do. And if you want to just print it out, great, print it out. If you want to crash your program immediately, crash your program immediately. Uh, for those of you coming from the engineering side, did you learn about exceptions? Yeah. None, eh? Uh, with, the, with the body of the pop function, are you actually thinking about what used to be the pop? Are you actually deleting it from the array? No, no. See, here's the thing. This goes to what you were. If we're removing something from the stack, the stack is not the one in control of what's actually on the stack. Someone, some, maybe it was the main method, created a new integer and then gave me a pointer to it. Okay? They are responsible for that data. I'm not. I'm just going to return it. I'm not going to delete anything. Because imagine I pop it and I go, oh, here's the pointer to that thing. And then I delete it. Well, <coughs> they, they, they wanted it. They just, they just popped it and they wanted the pointer to that thing. If you delete that thing that you just returned to them, you're, you're going to have a, things aren't going to work out quite well. So the stack is not in charge of, oh, did I allocate this thing or not? Somebody else is. This does return it and effectively removes it from the stack, but that object that it's pointing to, that thing that it's pointing to, is still going to exist. So let's have a quick look at peak. We're going to do the same thing with peak. Peak, remember, is basically the same as pop, but you don't actually remove the thing. You return a pointer to the thing on top, but you leave the thing on top. So if you try to peak with an empty stack, OK, exception. But otherwise, just return this at top minus 1. But leave top where it is. Don't remove the thing. Just return that pointer. You had a question, another one? If I have, if the top of my stack is 5, okay, who cares how long that array is? The top of my stack is index 5. Where does the next thing in the stack go based on how we described it? Into what index, though? 
which would be I'm getting seven four. Let's go back to their little picture because that'll explain everything. <coughs> My goodness, there we go. In this situation on that bottom line, what is top? Three. If I want to add something, where does it go? Three. If I want to pop something, can I draw a pop from three? I pop it from three minus one. If you ever get lost, think, where would it start? Let's say my stack was empty. Where's the top? Zero. 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 So where does the new thing go? <coughs> Zero. Bingo. I'm glad you brought it up, though. It helps solidify that top is actually the next available spot. It's not really the top. The top is kind of like top minus one. I guess it depends on how you want to define top. You can get all philosophical about stacks, I guess. But let's not. If I can blitz back to where we were. The two string push, expand capacity, pop, peak. So here's delete. If I do something like this, this goes to what I was talking about before, we're going to be in big trouble. Do we want to actually delete the thing that the stacks are pointing to? <coughs> no. Because the stack is not the one responsible for that memory. It's not responsible for creating the things that it's pointing to. Someone else is. Someone else gave me, the stack, the pointers to the things. When I pop, when I delete, I just want to cease existing, but leave whatever that was alone. Because someone else is responsible for that data, not me. So it's not my problem to delete. If there's a memory leak because of this, it's not my fault as a stack. It's somebody else's fault for not being controlling of their data. So we don't want this. There. That's it. That's the stack. That's an implementation of a stack. It's all there. I'm going to post code for this integer stack immediately after class that you can look at, play around with, have fun and whatnot. You're going to use the stack in lab. Yeah? So like it doesn't need an actual deconstructor? No, that's okay. We still want the deconstructor. I guess this is bad. I didn't explain it. Basically, I want this only. Okay. I don't want that part. You'll see in the code. I'm glad you said that. We do want a deconstructor. We want to delete the thing that we allocated. <coughs> the only thing we ever wrote new next to was those arrays. So we'll delete our array, our integer pointer array that stack points to, but that's it. We leave whatever that the things are pointing to alone. Not my problem, somebody else's problem. Good question. So that's it. We could add stuff if we want. We could add like an equals if we wanted. And I can test this. What happens if I, that first line, what is that two string going to point out? Like nothing. That little like arrow that says top, which is like pointing to nothing. Size is zero, empty is true. I can push all these things, great. There we go. In this situation, I'll probably run into a memory leak because I won't be able to delete those things because I'm just <coughs> keeping them there. But this is just for simple testing purposes. Print this out, great, whatever. It's all there, P, pop. All this code I include in the code that you're gonna get that you can play around with. Here's an example of using the exceptions. What I would say is try to pop from the stack. And then I'd say the fact that delete is next to that pop is not required. I'm just saying pop from it and delete the, the thing that the return thing was pointing to. This is to prevent my memory leak. So try to pop from that stack. Catch exception E. If that happens, say I got an exception trying to pop. Same with peak would work that way as well. Try and catch are basically like if statements for the exception. Try this. If an exception's thrown and you catch it, this is how you address it. If an exception's not thrown, just ignore and just carry on. And uh, we'll pick, we'll stop. Actually, we already all did this. This was my rant at the beginning of class. Anyways, see you Friday and happy to you tomorrow. <laughs>